Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. I hope you are all having a wonderful Monday evening. I don't usually do a live on a Monday evening, um, but Bill's confirming that we have sound. So I'm going to just kind of randomly kind of talk for a little bit. Do, 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 as Bill finds out. All right, we got sound. I could hear it on the TV upstairs. So I wasn't planning on doing a video today, and I was kind of hoping that I was going to get a chance to do some painting videos, but honestly, I just haven't had time because to do that, I have to really kind of clear off my entire surface and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, the the perils and, and struggles of being a, a quilter on YouTube, it's like... Yeah, I'm not complaining. I love this. This is too fun. But what I have been working on is getting ready for some quilt shows. So my um, my own guild, West Michigan Quilters Guild, is having a show coming up April 1st and 2nd. And so I've been working on my quilts. And you've seen me. I've done some of the, vid the um, quilting on them. But now I'm working on getting my booth set up. So it would be really cool if any of you in the West Michigan-ish kind of area, if you want to come to a show and um, I'll have a booth there, it would be the Quilts on the Grand here in Grand Rapids at the Delta Plex on April 1st and 2nd. So that's what I've been kind of working, getting ready for. So let's see, we got Luddington. Yeah, Roxanne, I think you should come down to the West Michigan Quilters Guild Quilts on the Grand Show April 1st and 2nd. Luddington isn't that far away. It would be really great to see you. Um, yes, but I don't think that Maya from Melbourne, Australia can come. Sorry, but wouldn't it be great if you could? Hi, everyone. Um... Thank you very much, Cindy. That's very sweet of you. And from the UK, yep, and Germany. Wow, we're very international today. Thank you also very much for watching. So in the process of getting ready for the show, I've been making sure that all of my samples are done, um, and then my books are all printed in patterns and stuff, which you guys know that you can get on my YouTube I'm sorry, on my website, which is www.onpoint-tv.com. But I'm also sharing a booth with my friend Laura, who is the owner of Fireside Quilts. And you hear me talk about that a lot, because if I'm doing certain things, you know, maybe a fabric or a ruler or something, I'll tell you, go to firesidequilts.com for that. Well, she's right here in Grand Rapids and decided to have a booth. So we've been working on a booth together. So I've been working on some samples for her booth. And the one behind me is the one that I've been working on. Now, it's a really cool panel. So there are nine of these panels. And they're about an 11-inch panel. Um, and in the process of doing it, I also was trying this other, I don't want to diss anybody, but this this kind of thing she was wanting me to test for doing the sashings, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So I came up with my own way to do it. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. Hello, Arizona. And the, uh, thank you very much, Athena. Pleasing you is... That's what we're shooting for. Um, thank you. I do appreciate that. You know, I do. The one thing about when I do a video like this, I'm all by myself. Bill's just like seven stairs up because we just live in a little tri-level. Um, but I don't have Athena here to pick on or anything. So sometimes it gets a little bit lonely. Um, and Oregon, thank you very much. And Idaho. And wow, everybody's here. Oklahoma, the oldest town in Oklahoma. I would love to come and visit the oldest town in Oklahoma sometime. So what I want to show you today is two part. One, I want to show you how to deal with panels. I don't know if you've ever purchased a panel, but you'll go to the store and there's sometimes some of the panels are just so doggone cute and so phenomenal and have such great content on them. But using a panel in a quilt is not always the easiest thing. And I'm going to explain to you why. And then I'm going to explain to you how I make this kind of cool little sashing and why I make it the way. And I'm actually going to run over to use my sewing machine. And I've got a camera on the other side of my studio. And I'm talking like, you know, eight feet away. Um, so we're kind of trying out a new camera system too. My son, Keith, who is an audio video engineer, has been helping me out immensely. So that's been really great. Wow, more United Kingdom and Florida and in Deerfield Beach. And I'm going to think maybe, oh, there it is, Florida, Mexico and Manitoba, Canada. Thank you all. Um, I do appreciate when you put comments and when you put questions, which reminds me, before I move on to what we were going to do, before we even started, Kimberly 
who is one of my um, channel memberships, she asked a question right at the very, very beginning before I even started. And her question is, if you ever watch any of my videos, like um, when I do a pinwheel or anything where I'm doing a block that is four blocks coming together, and I'll show you how to do the seam separating on that block and that helps eliminate a lot of the bulk on the inside so i'm not going to do the pinwheel or any of that now but kimberly is wondering do i ever actually do the seam separating when i'm putting a row together kimberly i'm hoping this is what you mean so i'm going to go to my overhead camera and kind of give you an idea so this is a quilt I posted this on the show, show and Share Facebook page, so not sure if you saw it, but it's using some of my African fabrics. Um, I have a lot of African fabrics, and this is just some of the scraps from my African fabrics. Um, and I just, you know, did half square triangles and just like the light and dark. I love this kind of thing. And it was kind of funny. I asked my friend Karen, I'm Karen, Karen, what do you think of my new quilt? She goes, it's too busy. And I'm like, what? She goes, it's too busy. I just, Nancy, I don't like it when it's that busy. And she was like really disturbed. And I was like, okay, that was so cute that she was like, it's just too busy. And it's not always going to be for everybody. I love it. All right. Um, you like those panel? What are the other three? I will be showing you what the other three. Um, Oh my goodness. All right. We will be seeing you then at the show. So what Kimberly was asking, so here, and it's going to be a little hard for me to tell because the rows on this were not just all straight around because of the way that I made it. But the idea of what Kimberly is asking is, you know, if you're doing blocks going this way and then you've got blocks going this way, do I ever seam separate at the block level when I'm putting the rows together. So here I have pressed all of these seams up. And what Kimberly is asking is, couldn't I seam separate those blocks so that I would have less bulky seams every time the blocks go together? Yes, you can if you plan ahead. So it works on this block because on this block, for some reason, can't tell you why, but I pressed both of those seams out and above, they were both pressed in as opposed to all going to the right and all going to the left. So in this case, I could have seam separated that and made that seam, even with these pinwheels, maybe a little less bulky. But then when it comes to this one, I couldn't do it. If I had taken this seam and pressed it in, then I would be able to go up and down with these seams, eliminating some of the bulk. So Kimberly, in answer to your question, Sometimes I will seam separate within the blocks, but not all the time. And mostly the not all the time is just because then I get too obsessive and I'm like, oh no, I must do this one. And so I got to change the seams, go one way or the other. And, and I just don't want to be that obsessive. Now, if you want to be, and that's what pleases you, then I highly suggest you do it. But for me, I usually want to get onto the next quilt. So I'm doing the very best I can with the very best techniques that I know. And then from there, um, I'm just not going to fuss over it. Um, a solid border? Yeah, maybe. But thanks for the suggestion, Grammy. I'm not sure that I'm even going to put a border on here. Um, but I'm not, yeah, for me, when I put get ready to put the border on, I'll take lots of fabrics. You know, maybe this red one. Yeah, no, not so much. Um, I'll think of something to go on there. And I'll let you guys know how this one all turns out. Okay. So, panels. Let's talk panels. Here are the other three from this patriotic panel set. So these are American patriotic ones, um, a beautiful flag and the eagle. So let's talk panels. Why do panels never work as easily as we think they do? They should. So if you're looking at this piece here, I want you to know that this was the salvage edge. This is the length of grain. So this block was connected like that. So here's my salvage. This is how the blocks were connected. When you go to cut these blocks apart, cutting between the blocks on the same, um, on, on the length of the grain, the same way that the salvage is going, you can always get a perfectly straight line. If I place my ruler 
on these blocks, and I was going to do it on the eagle because he had the black edges. Might make it a little easier to see. When I place the ruler on the edge of this block, the other edge going length of grain is going to run perfectly straight every time, right? But look at the width of the fabric going here. Do you see how it is tipping down? It's going down in this case about an eighth of an inch. Um, and at the top, usually it's going to be about the same. Yep. It's going about an eighth of an inch. So when you get a panel home and you're wanting to use it, maybe you wanted to leave a little bit of the cream on the outside. To do that, you can line up, you know, length of grain here and then say, all right, here I'm going to have a half inch seam on this side. But watch what happens when I move it up so that here I would have a half inch. It starts out at a half inch going here, but then it's not a half inch. Wow, and this one's actually not that bad. This one's kind of pretty square. This one is defying my theory here because it's straight here and it's not too awful bad there. Let's see what the other ones, because the other six that I did were not. I don't know why that one is happily shouldn't be complaining, not complaining. So he's straight going length of grain, but when I go to a half inch on the top and on the bottom there, he's not as straight, but this row is really straight. The ones that I did behind me were not this straight. They were like about an eighth of an inch off. So the width of fabric and I think I know why this happened, and hopefully it's going to be on this one too. Don't you love it when I like think I know what I'm going to teach you and then suddenly I'm taught something? Okay, so this one is more typical. Okay, I'm lining it up half inch here. So I want a half inch of the cream. Oh my goodness, do you see that bright light? Let's get rid of that. Okay, half inch on the left side. When I position it for the half inch on the top side, Look at what happens with the block. This is what oftentimes happens with the block in a panel. Um, I'm honestly surprised that those other two were really straight because I'm going to tell you what I did to help this whole cause, but this is going to happen a lot. So when you're working with a panel, you need to know that you're oftentimes not going to be able to use that background color that is here. I would recommend that before you even start cutting anything out of the entire panel, you first take it to your ironing board using some spray sizing and you move the iron in the um, direction of the salvage. So I took this to the ironing board and I pressed it going this way with spray sizing so that the block was going to be as stable as it could possibly be. Then I kind of cut them out and I cut them out just going length of grain just to make them smaller. So when I'm working on them, I'm not dealing with the whole big panel. And in this case, I decided to trim these blocks to 11 inches. Now I can go length of grain here and have a quarter of an inch and then have just an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to center that up. But look what happens down here. Ooh, you can really, really see it. I'm not going to be able to do this one straight across, but that's okay. George's head is not going to mind if he's, and you can kind of see that he's a little bit tipped. It is not going to bother me if in this quilt, George's head is perfectly straight or if George's head is a little bit tipped. So when you're trimming out, you oftentimes have to go into the, the background fabric here. So here I'm going to make it be a little bit of a quarter inch. I'll cut it off there. Here it's going to be cut off so that I can have an 11 inch block to be working with. So I'm going to trim this how you square up, trim on the right side, then the top side. Spin this around. Now I'm going to tuck this right into 11 inches. So it's got less than a quarter of an inch on the two sides and on the top and bottom. This is less than a quarter of an inch. This is less than a quarter of an inch. So the outline will be like that. Keeping in mind, like this might look bothersome to some of you, but that is going to have the um, sashing 
covering that so you won't see it at all. In the case of this particular panel, I did save these pieces. I'm using these for the cornerstones on the block. So if we look at the one from here, so these sections here, I actually used that little bit of the cream that was left over there. I thought that looked really cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is make our sashings. So I just used a variety of blues and reds for the scrappy. All right. Now what I did to make it so that when I was sewing on them, they would stay generally pretty straight because I did, I chose in this case that I did not just want a square, a square, a square, a square, a square. That would have looked absolutely fabulous. But in this case, I wanted it to be a bit wonky. Well, the problem with sewing wonky, if you're just going to take um, a bunch of strips, so hold on a sec, let me run on over here and grab just a bunch of them. There. So if you're just going to take a bunch of little strips, a little squares, and start piecing them together, if they're all straight, well, I could have just done straight edges like this, but they weren't. I on purpose cut some a little bit wonky. You can kind of see one here. And when I'm piecing them, I am intentionally creating wonkiness, creating a little bit tipping here and there. Not outrageous amounts, but just enough that for me, it makes it fun. Okay. Oh yeah, Millie, I'm um, the quilted poodle. <laughs> I'm hoping that Maddie, I'm hoping that you're going to come to the quilt show April 1st and 2nd, because she's in Lansing. That's only about an hour away. All right. So I'm going to now go to the sewing machine and show you how, ooh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you how I make these. Now I want you to know what I'm using to keep them straight. This is a cutaway polyester stabilizer. You can go to any of your quilt shops, definitely any quilt shop that has embroidery machines. Um, and even if it's not that, if you can't get this at the quilt shop, because if a quilt shop doesn't sell machines or embroidery machines, they might not carry this. But any of the craft stores, even like Joann's, they're going to carry the Pellon cutaway stabilizer. Nothing fancy. This is just a cutaway stabilizer um, that is going to hold together. Keeping in mind that cutaway stabilizers are what you would use if you were putting a sweatshirt, a design, an embroidery design on a sweatshirt. And you know how when you first buy that sweatshirt, that stabilizer is a little bit stiff. But as you wash it and wash it and wash it, it gets softer and softer. And that's what it does in the quilt. It's also what I use when I'm doing um, my invisible machine technique, my machine, invisible machine applique technique. I take the cutaway stabilizer and I actually put the fabric over it and then it all ends up being soft in the quilt. Okay, so I took this and I cut two and a half inch wide strips. So that's what these are. And I've started piecing them and I cut them into some long strips. In the end, I will cut them down to 11 inches. But to start with, I just didn't feel like I wanted to be that picky. So I just cut some longer strips and I'm going to take these longer strips and some of my little fabric scraps and go to my machine now. Now, keep in mind, this is my new cam. Well, actually, it's my old camera on my new mount location so that I can actually see. Ooh, and I actually have the video up here. It actually, Athena, it worked. I can see the video. We were discussing whether or not it would actually work. So this is the idea. I've got my machine set up just with my regular foot, and I have moved my needle over so that it's about a quarter of an inch from the edge. It really doesn't have to be a perfect. If you've struggled with your quarter inch seam allowance, this would be a time to go, woo-hoo-hoo, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I've got a lot of reds and blues all cut up, so I've got those all on here, okay? And I've got my strips. I'm going to work with three of them because I'm going to do some chain piecing as I go. And the idea, I'm going to take this strip and I'm just going to place it over top. And I want it to be a little wonky. So let me go this way maybe this time. Okay. And just sewing with my quarter inch on the edge. As easy 
as that. So take my next one. Sometimes I'm using bigger pieces. Sometimes I'm using skinnier pieces. But chain piecing is always going to be the most efficient for me. I mean, I love doing chain piecing. I'm always going to do chain piecing. So here I'm going to wonk that up a little bit, kind of take them over. Now keep in mind, you can't go too, too extreme. Um, for instance, I can't take this one and put my piece on too far like that because if I do with his that tip being so far and this piece not being very wide when I flip it over that piece is gonna jump up here into the stabilizer so use the stabilizer to know that you're going from top to bottom and use the stabilizer to help you align your next piece so that it won't go off kilter so that you don't have any um, stabilizer behind it, that your fabric will be um, floating in midair. And we really want these all to have the stabilizer behind them just because that'll work. So now I'm going to take, oops, I should have showed you that. So I've got this piece and I sewed this piece kind of wonky. I want to cut off a little bit of that extra blue just because. So take the stabilizer and fold it back. And then from the front side, just take your sharp pair of fabric scissors and just trim it back. Now, you don't have to. If you decide you just don't want to, well, then just don't do it. All right. But I usually try to trim a, if it's that big. Now, this is a perfect case of I went too wonky. Watch this. Going to just finger press it right here. I do not have, let me put something black under it so you can maybe see better. Do you see where the stabilizer is and where my fabric piece went up? In order for me to piece my next piece on, if I just go right next to the next piece, I'll end up with a big gap here. Now, if it were only a little bit of an eighth inch so showing, I'd go, all right, not too big of a deal. I'm just going to leave it go. But this is quite substantial and it would end up with my quarter inch seam allowance being shown. So this time, I'm going to take a piece and instead of taking it to the end of the red, I'm going to go, all right, if I go right to here, that's only about an eighth of an inch of the stabilizer showing. And that's going to help save me from my overzealous wonkiness. I'm sure that that's not real good English, but I think you get the idea. So finger press, reach over, grab another piece. The taller they are, the more wonkiness. I could have cut these longer. I cut them all about three inches. If I'd cut them all three and a half inches, I would have had more ability to wonk it, to really, you know, tip it around. Um, but it kind of, honestly, it's a little bit of a waste of fabric, as you can imagine, right? All right, so I'm glad you like this idea. All right, so do him up. And then this one is, well, I don't want that because he's the same color as that one. And I want something a little different. Oh, where'd that black piece go? There we go. So these were just leftover scraps. I was working on a jelly roll kind of a quilt with these leftover scraps. So this time, because I have this bigger piece, when I sew this on and I've gone pretty wonky, I got to be careful but I'm, I'm right there. I'm not going to lose any of my sashing. So this time I'll go this way and that way, kind of center them up a little bit. This one will be the most wonky of the pieces that I've done, All right? Get to the end, reach to the back, cut off the train. Cut them apart and I wanna to get to that one that I fixed. So this is the one that I fixed. This is one where the red was very shy of the stabilizer. Trim that off. Oops, I think I forgot to put that in the camera. <laughs> now, when I press this up, look at that. I fixed that little edge so there's no more stabilizer showing. And I do got a really cool wonky edge. All right. So I could proceed to do these using all of these different fabrics that I have. I'm going to do one more, but I'm going to take you to back to the cutting table to show you what's next. So I do like doing something like this just because it's interesting. Squares would have been perfectly fine, but I decided to do it like this just to make it more interesting, a little bit more fun. Nothing wrong with just using squares. I just thought it'd be interesting. So, and you can imagine all the different 
times that you could use something like this. Um, you could, like, let's say I have a busier block. Well, if I took that block and surrounded it with something a little solid or a little mellower, then I could go back to a wonky um, sashing. You wouldn't want to have a really busy block and then a wonky sashing. That would just be a little hard on anybody's eyes, and I'm all for crazy things. But when you're working with something like a panel where it's, you know, one solid panel piece doing a wonky um, sashing just, I think, looks interesting. So we're going to now take this. All right. So this is what it looks like when I get them all done. I take them to my ironing board and I press them and spray them with sizing. Now there is a new boy on the block and I don't know why this one is a boy as a pair opposed to Mary Ellen's Best Press being a girl, but this one is from Magic. Now, these people used to make a sizing in an aerosol can that's in your grocery store aisle. They are now making it because they figured out that people were not using sizing to press their husband's shirts anymore. Bless your heart if you are, but that's not what most people are using it for. Um, so they started researching what they are using for and come to find out it's quilting and crafting. So they have made a new spray sizing. I really, really like it, but I honestly don't like it any better than the Mary Ellen's Best Press. And I don't know that I have a jug of, I don't have my sprayer for Mary Ellen's. So in terms of the quality of the two sizings, even Steven, honestly. But this sprayer is very good. It, it doesn't leak like sometimes the Mary Ellen's will over a little bit of time. And I've traveled with this one quite a bit. So just for the sprayer alone, I'm really liking this one. And it seems like in some stores I'm seeing that it's a little bit cheaper, but in some they're making it an even Steven. So just investigate it. See what you can find at your craft shop. See if they're carrying the magic Quilt and Craft Spray, which is a sizing. Works the same way as the Mary Ellen's. Honestly, if they don't have the same formula, I'd be shocked. I know that they don't, but it's from me to you, looks like the same thing, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take that strip and I'm gonna spray size it. Make sure everything is nice and stiff. I like it when everything is very, very flat. You know that if you watched any of my videos. Now I can flip it over to the backside and look at that. I know exactly where to trim this for my two and a half inch wide strip. It's gonna fit right on there perfectly. And in this case, I want an 11 inch long. So I'm gonna take this to here. And now look at this. You can kind of see there's a seam right under there. I do not want to cut it right on the seam. So this is where instead of stopping, if I stop at 11, it's gonna be right on the seam. I'm gonna scooch it up a little bit and cut it off there so I will find my rotary cutter. There it is. I will cut here and then I will cut. Oops, I moved a smidge, not too much to worry about. All right, so I cut it on that end so it was not on the little line there. I didn't want it to be on the seam, honestly. So now I can line it back up here. I can do it two and a half. I can see I've got a little bit of a color here, a little bit of a color there, and cut this way. And that is my sashing, okay? So from each one, oh, I hope I cut this one so it's not too, nope, so now this one is going to be too short. I won't be able to go to 11, but you know what I will do? Look at this. So my stabilizer is a little bit short. I will probably go and add, I don't have a piece right here right now, but just add another piece on here because it's only about uh, three quarters of an inch short. So I would just add another piece over here to make that be a little bit longer because there's no way I'm letting that go to waste. That's just way too much to go to waste. After I have cut them into their sashing sections, I will add the cornerstone to that. And then this will go on to my quilt. So he will look like that. Pretend there's no sash cornerstone on that and like that. So that'll be my row and then my row of sashing. So if you're looking behind me, going to take my sashing and put it between each of the blocks. And then my rows are going to be the sashings going horizontally with 
cornerstones. And then at some point I'll do some border on it. Like I just said, I never quite know what I'm going to do until it's time. I'll probably ask Laura at Fireside if, because this is her sample if she has a I don't know, an idea so that she we can maybe kit everything up. So the panel is available in firesidequilts.com. It does have nine blocks in the panel. Um, so it'd be a nice wall quilt. Could be a little lap quilt, depending on if you added more, you know, some interesting borders to it or something like that. So I hope you like this. Just a cool way, way with dealing with some panels that are not always going to be straight and learning some wonky sashings. Keep in mind, I do have a membership. So if you're interested in learning more about the membership, when you got on to the channel, there was a join button. Click on that join button. It's not going to make you join, but it's going to give you more information about the three different levels. Um, basically, the membership not only is for people that want to learn electric quilt and people that want to get my patterns, but mostly it's for people that want to let me keep doing what I'm doing. Um, got to make a living, right? And so it's just one way for me to make a little bit more money money so that I can keep doing what I'm doing. I do have some other shows coming up. I'm teaching in Paducah this year for the first time. I've never even been to the Paducah show. So really excited to teach down there. I think my classes are full at this time, but hopefully I'll start being able to teach at some of the other AQS shows. I would love to be able to go around like they've got a Des Moines and a uh, Daytona, I think, and um, some other places, but I will be in Long Beach, California. They just announced, um, just maybe a week or so ago, put out that the classes are open. So if you happen to be on the west side of our country, um, Long Beach, California kind of area, I'll be teaching at Quilt Festival there. I've got um, a painting class, an improvisational piecing class, and... I can't remember what my middle class is. I've got an all-day class and then two half days. So I'm going to go see Long Beach, California. Never been there before. I've heard it's called LBC. The LBC. I'm going to the LBC. I think that's where the cool rappers live, according to my hairstylist. So that's what we have. Um, Kentucky, thank you very much for walking, watching. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that you like wonkiness, Marsha. I just knew that you were the type that was going to like wonkiness. All of you have a great day, all right? Talk to you soon.